next area I want to talk about in terms of healing your foot wound fast is how you can do an evaluation, how you can look at how your nerves are working in your foot. You may wonder why it's important to look at your nerves. The nerves are what give you the feeling. They let your sweat glands work. They let your body have sensation and feeling and, and sense of where you're at. And when you have diabetes, your nerves many times are affected. I've had a couple of patients that when they're walking into the office, they come in and they're stomping. And I look at them and I say, well, why are you stomping so much? Well, I just walk that way. You know the, why, the reason they're stomping? Is because they don't feel their feet. And when they stomp, they can actually feel the vibration going up their leg and into their thigh because their feeling is so much lost due to something called neuropathy. A nerve evaluation is very important because by far one of the leading causes of, of an ulcer or even an amputation are in people that have neuropathy. I'll kind of explain neuropathy and this research behind this. This all goes back uh, with an individual called Mr. or Dr. Brand. He used to work in the leper colonies with leprosy. Leprosy is a disease where you lose your sensitivity, you lose your sensation. And in the leper colonies, once you, you got it, it used to progress. And if it progressed, you could actually have a finger one day and have the finger cut off and you wouldn't feel it. You wouldn't have any pain. And most people died not from the leprosy, but from the infections because they used to get a cut and they didn't know it and that cut got infected, and they died from the infection. People with diabetes, they don't have leprosy, I'm not saying that, but people with diabetes and other people, they can develop a condition called neuropathy. I'll dissect the word for you. Neuro comes from nerve. Pathy comes from injury. So for some reason, your nerves are becoming injured and you don't have as good a feeling on the bottom of the foot or on the top of the foot or in your leg or maybe in your hands. The most common place that this is seen is in your feet and in your hands. It's called a stocking and glove positioning or distribution of it. Meaning if you lack a feeling in your fingers, lack a feeling in your toes, very, very common. An easy way to understand that, looking at the diabetes example, but there are other types of causes for neuropathy if you're not diabetic. You may be watching this due to alcohol-induced neuropathy, something, a nutritional supplement, Gillian bear some other toxicity. It could be hereditary, lead, idiopathic, or meaning we're not sure what caused, or sarcoidosis, or sarcoid problem, or a thyroid problem. All these can cause neuropathy as well. Most people watching this probably have neuropathy due to diabetes. An easy way to understand how neuropathy affects or is caused is if you think about a blood vessel. When you have a blood vessel, you have a nerve and two blood vessels on the side. Most nerves are, have two blood vessels on the side of them accompanying them because a nerve is very, very sensitive to lack of blood flow or lack of oxygen. For example, when a child is born and if you cut off the blood supply just for a few seconds, that child can die or have brain death because of the nerves not getting enough oxygen or not getting enough blood because your blood is what causes and carries the oxygen to get there. Much in the same way, if your blood that's around your nerve, here's the nerve and here's the blood, if your blood around the nerve has too much blood sugar in it, it can cause that nerve to swell and causes the nerve not to function as well. It's usually a progressive problem. It doesn't start all at once. And a very important point, it doesn't always depend on the years of diabetes. 
For example, some people have diabetes for 30 years and never have any nerve or neuropathy problems. Most of them do have some neuropathy, but it's not really based on the time you've had it. Other people have diabetes maybe only for a couple of years or a couple of months, and they have very bad neuropathy or the other infections or the other complications. A lot of people say, well, that's not fair, and I'm not sure why. The biggest challenge in terms of diabetes and the symptoms that can happen and the problems that can happen, such as neuropathy, wounds, and amputations, is that diabetes isn't a forgiving disease. And if you are diagnosed late, for example, some people can have diabetes for a couple of years without knowing it. They're not diagnosed. Or they may have it for a couple of years without taking the proper medications to get their blood sugar down. The longer your blood sugar is elevated, the more complications you could have due to diabetes in your eyes, in your nerves, and in your kidneys. Those are the most common areas that can be affected. But let's go back and talk more about neuropathy. How is it diagnosed? Diagnosis neuropathy usually is done by your doctor in the office. It's a simple exam. The most common way is using something called the Sims-Weinstein. It's a little plastic monofilament that's used to touch different areas on the bottom of your foot and on the top of your foot. If you can feel all of those areas, you have what we call protective sensation. You're protected. You can go out, if you step on something, if you have something in your shoe, you'll normally be able to feel it. But if you can't feel those little spots on the bottom of the foot when your doctor touches you with your eyes closed, you probably have some loss of what we call protective sensation. Meaning if you step on something, you're not gonna know it, and it could something could go into your foot, such as a pin, such as a coin, such as a rock, and it could lead to other problems. So you're at greater risk you would be a person that wouldn't ever want to go barefoot. You would always want to be wearing special diabetic shoes to reduce the friction. There are a couple of other tests that can be done. One is using a tuning fork. By putting a tuning fork on the tip of your big toe, if you can feel the tuning fork, and then when it stops, the vibration, when you can't feel it anymore, but the person testing you still can, that loses some, you've lost some of the vibration sensation. Also, another type of sensation that you may, may lose is actual proprioception. Proprioception is recognizing where you are in space. So if you can lift your foot, foot, toe up and you say, oh, my toe's up or my toe's down, or which toe I'm touching, up or down, that's proprioception. That's many times lost when someone has neuropathy. There are some more advanced tests that can be done if you're still unsure, or if you have an abnormal cause of neuropathy, you can do an EMG or an NCV, a nerve conduction velocity. Both of these are a little bit more involved exams. They tend to be done by a neurologist to evaluate the extent of the neuropathy. The big question is how does this affect you when you have neuropathy. Let's say you have neuropathy. When you have lack of feeling, you're at much greater risk of developing a blister or developing a wound or having that wound get infected and you not knowing it because you don't have the gift of pain. Pain is a gift. And if you don't have it, you can develop a problem quicker and not know. That's the challenge with neuropathy. If you have it or if a loved one has it, you need to especially take care to look at your feet every single day. But neuropathy not only affects the feeling, it can also cause some pains. And the way I equate it is if you look at a light. When you have a light, it's working fine, but as it starts to go out, it starts to flicker, and then eventually goes out completely. That's how neuropathy affects your nerves. They don't go out all at once, but it's a slow flickering, and then it eventually goes out. So the question to you, What's better, neuropathy that hurts or neuropathy that doesn't hurt? It's usually better that it hurts because the painful neuropathy, at least you have some nerve feeling left. Once it becomes non-painful, it's got to a point where the nerve actually completely dies. I get a few questions all the time from patients. One, can I get my nerve, my feeling back? 
there is some research that shows by increasing kind of the blood flow to the bottom of your feet, there are certain types of medical grade foods or supplements that can be used, including B12, that can help some of the blood flow back to help bring back nerve feeling. There are some types of treatments called anodyne treatments and other types of treatments that can be used. Most of them are experimental and they work with some types of people, not everyone. I don't want to give you any false hope that I can take away your nerve pain that you're having. Those types of treatments can sometimes help. There's also other medications. There are many different classes of medications that can be used to treat neuropathy. That's beyond the scope of this, but you can talk to your doctor about them. Some of them are anticonvulsants, antidepressants, or different types of creams that you can use. Creams that either heat up or cool down your feet. That helps not to remove the neuropathy, but it helps with some of the symptoms that you may feel. Once you're diagnosed though with neuropathy, my patients always ask me, what can I do? What should I be doing? There's two things that you should be doing to not make it get worse. One is to have your blood sugar completely under control. If your blood sugar isn't under control, if your blood sugar is very, very high, it's gonna make the neuropathy worse over time. Strict gly glycemic control, meaning strict blood sugar and hemoglobin A1C under seven and good blood sugars are gonna be the best treatment for you to keep your neuropathy under control and help it not to get worse. It's not to say that it won't get worse over time, but it, it may be better off if you can keep everything else under control and stable. And the second thing I always tell everyone that has neuropathy is to be especially careful with your feet, with your shoes, and with any new shoes that you get. Because your feet aren't forgiving. Neuropathy isn't forgiving. And if you buy a new pair of shoes and they don't fit, if they're too small or if they have a little seam on them that rubs you, you could very easily develop a blister and even a wound. So it's best when you buy new shoes to wear them for an hour and then look for any hot spots, I call them any red spots or areas of friction. Or if you have a shoe that you haven't worn for a couple of years or a couple of months, maybe you wore them in the winter and you're not wearing them until the next winter, just be aware that the fabric in most leather shoes, it hardens when you're not wearing them. And by putting them on, you have to break them in. And if they're not bending the right way, if they're not creasing the right way, they could cause friction and a wound in your foot. I like to end with a, a little story that I always explain to my patients. The challenge we have in treating foot wounds, and, and your big challenge, is that with a foot wound, it's not like an arm break. You can put an arm break in a cast, in a splint, and you're not gonna put any pressure on it. With a foot wound, you could have an open, open hole in the bottom of your foot and keep walking on it. And you know what? It probably won't hurt if you have neuropathy. You're not gonna feel it. But let me just ask you, have you ever got a paper cut on your finger? You're, you're working with paper, you get a little cut, it just really hurts. And you don't wanna use that finger until it's better. You put a Band-Aid on it, your other fingers try to protect it, that's the importance of your body, it tries to protect that cut, and you won't use it because it'll hurt too much. Imagine if it's very, very deep. Would you use that finger? No, you wouldn't. But the challenge is if you have a foot wound much bigger than a paper cut, you're walking on it, you're stepping on it, you're injuring the wound, but you know what? You have the neuropathy and it's not painful. And if I could just tell everyone, just imagine you had a paper cut or a, the big wound on your foot, on your finger, would you use that finger? Would you put pressure on it? Would you walk on it? Would you put it in a glove? Would you go to work? You wouldn't. And that's why if I can't emphasize, I wanna emphasize it the most here, you should be taking the pressure off your foot when you have a diabetic foot wound. The problem is many times it doesn't hurt. So it's so important for you to know, even if it doesn't hurt, you need to take the pressure off. You need to keep off it. You need to offload it. You need to take care of it. Just give me some time. Give your doctor some time to take the pressure off of it so it can get healed so it doesn't happen again, or to prevent it from happening again. And just know that if you have neuropathy, if you haven't been tested, you should be tested. You should determine if you have it and, and how bad it is, how high it goes, because there's different levels. It may just be at the toes, 
but it may extend to the foot, to the ankle, up to the leg, and it can extend every year. And that's why you should be evaluated at least every year or every six months for your neuropathy to determine the extent of it. So in this last section, we just learned about neuropathy, what causes it, why it's important, and how to prevent it from getting worse.